Welcome back for another Reddit story video. Today we have 3 stories for you to enjoy. As always, don't forget to share and like if you enjoy these videos. Without further ado, here we go. Are you sure you want to order this? Not sure if this counts, but this is a story where we were on the receiving end of some malicious compliance instead of dishing it out. So when I was younger, I was a fussy eater. There were plenty of foods I could simply just not stomach for no reason. Pretty standard. Although my parents always thought I was more flushy than I actually was. One day, I think I was 12, 13, my dad and brother were coming home from cricket practice and they stopped at McDonald's for a snack. They called home and asked my mom and I if we wanted anything. I asked for a hamburger without beetroot, tomato or mustard. So my dad went into the drive-thru and ordered the meal but put mine last on the list. But as he was giving the order, he completely forgot what I had asked to be taken out halfway through. He paused for a bit too long as he tried to remember it, but he couldn't. He started working backwards in his head, thinking, okay, what does he like? Dad, okay, forget the last one. I want the burger with just meat, lettuce and cheese. The cashier had to stop to think for a moment. Just meat, lettuce and cheese? Yes. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Okay, drive in through. They paid for the food and then went to collect. They got everything except my burger and were told to go to the waiting bay. They waited there and after a minute a worker came out to talk to them. Worker. Hey, did you order the burger with just meat, lettuce and cheese? Yes. Is that all you wanted? Yes, that's all. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Oh, alright then. The worker left and went back inside. Five minutes passed and at this point my dad is wondering what's taking so long. My brother, meanwhile, is getting annoyed and starts complaining. Then two people came out of the building. The same worker as before, leading the manager who came up to talk. Manager. Hello, did you order a burger with just meat, lettuce and cheese? Yes, is there a problem? No, no, it's just that, are you sure that's what you want? Yes, I'm sure. Okay, it should be ready in just a moment. Thank you for waiting. They leave and a few seconds after they go inside, the worker comes out with a bag with the burger inside. He gives it to my dad and apologizes for making them wait. He puts it on the back seat without ever looking at it. My dad and brother leave and come back home. Over the trip, the burger gets cold. When they arrive back home, my mom and I meet them and they tell us the story about what happened and how weird it was. I take my burger and open it to reveal meat, lettuce and cheese. No bun, no anything. Just a cold patty, soggy lettuce and half melted cheese all in a neat stack. They followed the order word for word and I don't know if that's a good service or bad service. I can only imagine what they were telling each other in the kitchen. You are a dishwasher. Wash down these dangerous kitchen knives. This story comes from one of my previous jobs when I was a dishwasher at a local convention center. Because it was a convention center, many different events were held during weekend nights. The events always involved 300 plus people and that meant the server team had to wait until they all clear out to start cleaning up everything and the dishwashing team had to wait for them which meant our jobs were until 2-3 am when our shifts were supposed to end around 12-1 am. Most servers understood what we were going through and were nice enough to clean up huge food scrapes off the plates and trays so all we had to do was run it through the dishwashing machine once. Now as dishwashers we were supposed to wash down pretty much everything except for kitchen knives. Servers used kitchen knives to cut cakes or cook meat and it was their job to clean them down. The water that we used to soak kitchen wares got murky really quick and you can guess how dangerous it was for someone to try to grab sharp knives. I even heard one of the ex dishwashers slice his wrist open almost to the tendon. Plus, the water was really dirty, so any cuts you make on your hands had a high risk of infection. As such, dirty kitchen knives weren't allowed at all in the dishwashing area. It was clearly stated in the company policy book. Almost every server didn't mind washing down the knives, as they were a simple task as opposed to the number of stuff dishwashers washed down. Enter JCM, the jerk catering manager. He joined our convention center about two months after I started to work there and he immediately made clear he wasn't there to make connections. He was so business oriented and profit focused making the server team do all the heavy lifting while he casually talked with event planners. He was one of those people who smiled and laughed with the guests while going all gung-ho to the servers 
and even the dishwashers. We were part of the kitchen staff, which was a separate department from the Kaidun group, meaning JCM had no jurisdiction over us. Many complaints were made from both the service and dishwashers, to which JCM completely denied and said they are just being lazy and don't want to do their job. I have the hardest job of managing both the guests and the staffs. One night it was particularly busy and both the servers and dishwashers were busting their ass. It was so busy to the point where we had to wash down the dirty plates twice so they can be used again. I was pretty much the dishwasher team lead and was running back and forth between the dishwashing area and behind the curtain area collecting dishes and managing temporary staff. I'm really not the type to multitask so I was flustered. JCM comes into the dishwashing area while holding a dirty kitchen knife. Hey, I'm going to need you guys to wash this down. Me. But I thought that was service job. Well, we are a little too busy. I'm going to need this washed down. Do you need it immediately? No. Then why don't you guys wash it down when everything is settled down? I am the catering manager here. If I say this needs to get washed down, this gets washed down. And why exactly should we listen to you? Because I'm your boss. <laughs> no, you're not. Executive chef's name is. Just leave it soaking in the dish water then. If you are the manager, then you should be following the company rules. Did I mention he was swinging the knife around while talking? As in, while pointing at me while standing really close? JCM did not like my response, and he slammed the knife into one of the waters. I do not want to see that knife brought back. Do it or all of you are fired. He then stomped his way out of the kitchen. All of the dishwashers were stunned to what they had just witnessed. I calmly told everyone to wash everything that were supposed to wash down, except for the knife. In the end, as we were cleaning down everything, I decided to leave the unwashed knife in the pit, as I was told. I told the rest of the dishwashers and servers to do the same. The next day, I wrote a profound email to my boss, other leadership figures, servers, and the parental company of the convention center. I told them about all the shit that went down, how I decided to comply with JCM's violation of company policy, and if he tried to deny everything, I told them to check CCTV. It may not have recorded sounds, but it certainly should have caught him in the act. On my next shift, there was an envelope in my cubby. The envelope contained a letter and a $50 Amazon gift card. The letter stated how grateful the company was to be for standing up to JCM. JCM was given a choice of voluntary leave or face disciplinary actions with termination, and he chose the former. They asked me to accept the gift card as a sign of appreciation, which I did. Demoted, then they realized they effed up. I will try to summarize this as much as possible through context first. Worked 9 years at a well-known company, worldwide provider of various products. Won't name this company, but it was a division of this company I worked for. I started at this company at the bottom as a tech, did my job well and excelled upwards. After six years, I was promoted into the national support group and also then excelled at this position. It was well paid and salary, which was very nice bump in the pay and the hours were great. After a year in a new position, I was promoted to a co-operator position, which I shared with another, which we were very good friends and got along very well. To this day, we still do lunches and chat quite frequently. Now, I was trained up on the in-house software that runs the dispatching of tags, which was made by an in-house software developer, which the software used codes for areas and states. Very complex, but for him it worked. Though no documentation whatsoever, no manual, nothing. The guy that had the position before me was leaving the company for a better offer, so it took a month to train me on this software. And of course I wrote down all the codes for all the areas just so I didn't get anything wrong, since there was no manual or instructions. He leaves the company. A year later, the developer of this software dies from cancer. So now no one but myself knows how to use this software. And taking vacations were far and in between due to this issue. I constantly ask for a backup to be trained so they can do this job while I go on vacations. At this point, I could only take two days at a time for a vacation and my wedding was upcoming in eight months and we were taking a month-long honeymoon. No go, got denied every time I requested a replacement to be trained. When my co-operator and I took over this new department, it was in shambles. Our turnover for repairs was sitting around 8 days, which upset a lot of customers due to these machines being used constantly during working hours. 
We brainstormed and came up with solutions to fix this and reduce downtimes dramatically. The bad thing about this is that it put extreme pressure on logistics to get parts overnight to tags in the field, which the logistics manager was okay with, which he in turn hired enough guys to take his burden on and was working out pretty well. This turned out to be great. We reduced our downtime from 8 days to on average 2 days. Customers commented constantly about how much better our service was and how they were definitely happy with how their repairs were going. Then it starts to go south from this point. My manager was looking to move up the ladder and need to hire someone for his position. Of course me and my co-operator apply for this position since we know how to run this division and think we could do the job great. We both get overlooked for manager's friend, which he had no experience in this division whatsoever. He was actually the one of the logistics purchasers. He has no idea whatsoever to run our department, nor any technical expertise whatsoever. He of course gets this position and right off the bat, this stupid idiot wants to change how we do things and reduce the strain on the logistics group. Co-operator and myself immediately protest and oppose his changes with prejudice and vigor. Through this fell on deaf ears. When he tells us to implement the changes, I refuse, and so does my co-operator. For weeks, we argue with manager's friend, which is now my manager, and he gets upset and continuously fight with us to make the changes. We again refuse. I emailed his manager and explained the situation and pointed out that it would increase repairs and our customer would be very unhappy. At this time, we grew the base of our customer 20-fold and our satisfaction rating on all of our reviews were in the upper 90s. Though these emails and everything that Cooperator and I were explaining went on deaf ears. At this point, the manager's friend feels that I am the instigator of the disobedience and that week I was called into a conference room with HR, manager's friend and his manager. They informed me I was going to be demoted from operator to dispatcher due to my inability to be a team player and confrontational to my manager, etc. etc. So I said, fine with me. I meant less work and same pay, so I'm okay with this. Now, with this job, you had certain functions of the job that you could and could not do. You could only do what was assigned to you for that job description. Dispatchers could only dispatch calls to tags and not assign their own calls that was my previous job. My co-operator at the time was in charge of escalations and onboarding tags and did not know the system I used to dispatch these calls. Next day, I come in and sit at my desk, waiting for calls to be put on my board knowing that there was no one now to dispatch calls to dispatches. After about 4 hours I get approached by manager's friends asking why I was not dispatching calls to everyone. I politely said, remember I got demoted, I can't dispatch. It's not part of my job description and I don't want to be fired for doing something that I am not allowed to do. The dread on his face could be seen as it streaks up his back and hits him full force. At this point he realized he just effed up. Of course. His manager and HR did not know anything about this software that was developed in-house and had no instructions on how to use it. It was the backbone of this division's dispatching software. Without this, no calls could be dispatched out whatsoever. The news is now getting around that no calls are being dispatched. A manager's friend manager now enters and asks what is going on. He soon realized as well what happened. They then call me back into the conference room and ask me to train a replacement. Of course I refuse. The day ends and I go home. Next morning I show up for work on the dot and they call me back in yet again, offering my position back and to please start dispatching calls as soon as possible. Of course I refuse the promotion, pointing out key points that they brought up during my demotion meeting on why they were demoting me. And because of those points, I felt I had to overcome them in order to be able to accept the promotion and it would be great time to focus on my abilities that they outlined. They were flabbergasted and frustrated clearly. They get upset and tell me that I am holding the company hostage and that they will have to take me to court. At this point, per my contract, I am now entitled to a lawyer and they have to pay. Few days goes by, of course no calls being dispatched. They are now relying on emails and phone calls to get calls dispatched and parts ordered and it's pandemonium abound. It is adding so much more time to each call and ordering parts, the whole system is falling apart. I finally get contacted by a lawyer telling me that he is to represent me and that he is being paid by the company I work for, but he works for me, period. That he cannot talk to them without my knowledge, he cannot do anything against my own interests, and that he is being paid by them, but works for me. 
He goes on to tell me that they can't force me to take promotion and they can't fire me if I fulfill my obligations of the employment contract, which was pretty easy. Basically, just show up on time, take breaks and specified time and leave at specified time. So I do. This goes on for a month when they are finally getting to the breaking point. Repairs are exceeding two weeks and customers are canceling their repair contracts due to service issues. They decided to demote me again to logistics. Now the manager of logistics is a good friend and he thinks this is retaliation for all these issues so he just says to me to take a desk over in the corner and do my thing whatever I wanted. He wasn't going to punish me for their stupidity. We go to court, they present their case and my lawyer presents mine. After two days the judge rules in favor of me and says that a company cannot force me into a job or doing a job that I do not wish and this would be considered enslavement. They press the judge to have me turn over the information to run the software that runs the division. The judge asked me if I had written down, at this point I didn't have it. I threw it away so I answered honestly to the judge. Though I did say, I do remember how to use it and all the codes to dispatch since I did it for years, it became like second nature. Judge asked me if I would be willing to write down the instructions, I politely said no. Okay, that's that then. Upon coming back to work the next day, I decided to start looking for another job. After about a month, I found out a new position at another company, making about 10% more and with better options and also agreed to give me the month off with salary for my honeymoon. So I wrote up a resignation letter and sent it to my manager, his manager and senior staff of the division and also the CEO of the company explaining everything that went on and why I was leaving the company and wished them the best. That Friday I packed up my personal stuff and left. Two weeks later I get a call from the CEO of the company apologizing for what happened and that all this information just came to light and that the individuals involved were terminated. Manager's friend and his manager and the one above him which was sweet to my ears and offered my job back. I politely declined. A few weeks after manager's friend was fired, I was told by my good friend and co-operator that he died from a drug overdose, which is sad and completely not deserved no matter how much I hated him. The division I ran was merged into another division a year later after it was not able to recover. 30% of the people that worked for that division were laid off or transferred to other divisions. My co-operator is still working for the same company Though he said after this whole ordeal, it never recovered and never was the same and had gone downhill dramatically. And he will be retiring this year. So those were the stories for today's video. If you enjoyed this video, a like would be highly appreciated. It really does help my channel out. Also, if you enjoy this and want to stay up to date on the latest videos, then don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for listening and I will see you in the next video.